Um, sorry about that, folks. We are live from the bush, but it is not actually a puddle. It is a seep. The elephants have actually dug this out, but they haven't used it for a while. And you can see there's lots of Inyala tracks and other animal tracks. And it's been here long enough that there's actually algae growing in the water. Now, it's been very hot today, and we've walked very far. Martin's done very well. It has been a, a, a properly long bush walk today, probably three or four times more in distance than we normally walk. But now, because it's been so hot, I'm quite thirsty. Now, this is an ideal spot to find a drink. Now, when I used to work in southern Tanzania, we used to go on anti-poaching patrols of three or four days, and we can't carry enough water for three or four days. And fortunately, that area was inundated with little sand rivers, and that's where we used to get our water. Now, this one is a little bit dirty at the moment, and I tried to do one a little bit earlier and hoping it would clean while we're waiting, but unfortunately not. So what I would do if I was out in the bush and I needed a drink of water, and I wasn't in a big rush, because this water is probably perfectly uh, fine to drink. I might even drink some out of the main puddle just now. But if I was being fussy, uh, I would do like this. I would dig myself a little hole here, and I'd put a little wall between the main puddle and myself, Make it just deep enough, you can see uh, that there's water coming in from underneath. And the trick is not to let the sides collapse. So, um, actually my trackers up there taught me how to do it. So you actually just want to leave a little lip like this. Now, this little lip that I've left here is actually where the water is feeding out of. Now the water looks quite dirty. But, see it's deep enough now that I can actually put my hands in. So, what I would do now, if I wasn't, in a rush, and now it's been a hot morning, we've walked far, so I'd dig a nice little puddle like that, and then I'd probably find myself a good shady spot to have a rest uh, till we started walking again. And over this time of about half an hour, 25 minutes, this water would actually become crystal clear. Now, this is only if you, well, if you're lucky enough to find uh, a seep like this, but normally you would actually have to just dig it straight out of the sand and you want to find spots where there's damp soil. You can see how damp the soil is here. So it shouldn't take me too much long to get water again and here we go. I mean sometimes you can get cleaner water quicker from doing this. Now again you've got to be so careful about the sides falling in. You want it deep enough that you can get a handful of water out like that but you don't want it too deep, because if you keep deeping, digging, there, that's exactly what happens, your sides fall in. So uh, it's, it's quite an art to dig a nice, you can always get water, but to get nice, clear drinking water, uh, you've just got to be patient and take your time. See, now I'm worried about the sides falling in. So there we go, that should work now. So there's a little undercut that you can't really see. There we go, you can see it there. And the water is actually seeping in from this, the undercut here. And uh, that's where the clear water is gonna come from. There we go. And I've drunk many, many, many liters of water from uh, spots like this. Oh, this is so nice. Ah, it's really hot, so that's quite... Ah, it's cooled down. So, Fortunately, I'm not desperate for water, so I don't have to wait half an hour for this to get clean before I drink it. Uh, <laughs> I can grab some water from Herbie's backpack. Uh, we're going to start making our way slowly back towards, the, uh, towards camp. While we do that, let's go see what Jamie's up to.